Good morning. Welcome to a morning reflection for Chorley and Layla Methodists as we continue through our series 40 Days of Purpose. We're up to day 21 today in the series. And this particular week, we've been thinking about our purpose is fellowship, being in communion with one another, being in relationship with one another. The first week um, was an introductory week, and then we looked at worship. Our first purpose is to worship, to foster and nurture our relationship with God. And then this second strand of our purpose, which is to be in relationship with others. Today <clears throat> is about when those relationships go wrong, when the community is damaged or broken. So day 21 is entitled Restoring Broken Fellowship. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 says, God has restored our relationship with him through Christ and has given us this ministry of restoring relationships. Relationships are always worth restoring. God has given us the ministry of restoring relationships or of reconciliation. For this reason, a significant amount of the New Testament is devoted to teaching us how to get along with one another. I wonder which of these uh, verses today will ring true particularly for you or be a, uh, especially a challenge for you to, to ponder and pray into. Philippians 2 verses 1 to 2 from the message. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favour. Agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. I like that phrase, be deep-spirited friends. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 5, obviously tackling some fallout in the Corinthian church. Shame on you. Surely there is at least one wise person in your fellowship who can settle a dispute between fellow Christians. Or 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, I'll put it as urgently as I can. You must get along with each other. Jesus said, God blesses those who work for peace for they will be called the children of God. Matthew 5 verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers who work for peace and reconciliation. Job 18 verse 4, you are only hurting yourself with your anger. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18, in the message, God has called us to settle our relationships with each other. Then we have and we're offered seven biblical steps to restoring fellowship. Seven steps. Step one, talk to God before talking to the person. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. James 4, 1 to 2. I like that sense of talk to God before talking to the person. It's an opportunity to get God's perspective, to throw it all uh, upon God and, and, and see whether in the spirit there's um, a path or a way of resolution. Secondly, always take the initiative. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. Jesus said, if you enter your place of worship, and are about to make an offering, and you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then, come back and work things out with God. That was the message, translation of Matthew 5, 23, 24. Always take the initiative. Thirdly, sympathise with others' feelings. Philippians 2 verse 4, look out for another's interests, not just your own. Or Proverbs 19 verse 11, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. 
Romans 15 verse 2, let's please the other fellow, not ourselves, and do what is for his good. And Ephesians 4 29, do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you will say will do good to those who hear you. Only use helpful words, Ephesians 4 verse 29. Um, yeah, that's about seeing things or sympathising with another's point of view. Fourthly, confess your own part in the conflict. Matthew 7 verse 5, Jesus said, first get rid of the log from your own eye, then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Make sure to acknowledge your own part in the conflict. 1 John 1 verse 8, if we claim that we're free of sin, we're only fooling ourselves. Fifthly, attack the problem, not the person. Psalm 73, verses 21 and 22. When my thoughts were bitter and my feelings were hurt, I was as stupid as an animal. Or Proverbs 15, verse 1. A gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. And a wise, mature person is known for his understanding. The more pleasant his words, the more persuasive he is. Proverbs 16, verse 21. And then number six in this process or these steps to repairing a broken relationship. Six, cooperate as much as possible. Romans 12 and verse 18, do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. And Matthew 5 verse 9, you're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. That's the message translation of that verse about being peacemakers. When you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. And finally, step seven, empathise or emphasise reconciliation, not resolution. Emphasise reconciliation, not resolution. 1 Peter 3 verse 11, work hard at living at peace with others. Work hard at living at peace with others. Matthew 5 verse 9, again, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And finally, Romans 15 and verse 3. Christ did not indulge his own feelings, as scripture says, the insults of those who insult you fall on me. So let me just go through those seven steps again. All the scriptures you'll find uh, alongside this video on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. Uh, I wonder what we can do today to restore broken fellowship. Day 21, restoring broken fellowship. Seven steps, seven biblical steps that are offered. One, talk to God before talking to the person. Two, always take the initiative. Three, sympathise with their feelings. Four, confess your part in the conflict. Five, attack the problem, not the person. Number six, cooperate as much as possible. And number seven, emphasise reconciliation, not resolution. That's day 21, uh, a day to focus on restoring broken fellowship, broken community. I wonder how that will shape the way we live today and the things that we do today in our discipleship, called and purposed by God. Let's pray and then I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll be back in Leyland, Chorley and Leyland tomorrow um, as our stationing week comes to an end. Thank you for all of your prayers. We've got final session this morning um, before uh, making the journey home. But uh, I, we do really appreciate all the prayers that have made a big difference to what has been a very challenging year for the stationing process for all sorts of reasons um, but thank you for your prayers 
Let us pray together. Father, we've rejoiced throughout this week at the positives, the wonder, the glory, the blessings of being in communion with one another, in community together, in fellowship, your family. We thank you for all the encouragement and support and challenge that we find within our church communities. But we recognise those times when relationships are soured, when people fall out, when grudges are held, when bitternesses begin to take root. Lord, thank you that your scripture doesn't hide from this reality. And in particular in the New Testament, lots of advice as to how we work our way through disagreements and are reconciled as we are reconciled with you. May those seven steps be helpful to us as we consider our response where relationships have become strained. And may we recognise that one of our purposes is to be peacemakers, to take the initiative, to see the other side, to extend the hand of friendship, fellowship, to work for reconciliation and for peace. Lord, may that be part of the heartbeat of our lives today. Uh, may we be peacemakers and therefore discover we are part of your family. We ask for your blessing upon ourselves, our churches, our circuit. All the conversations will happen later today as a result of the stationing matching group one to circuits and to ministers, including our own circuit here. And we pray for visits that may be made over the coming days and weeks for your purposes to be fulfilled. And we pray that for each of us in our relationships with neighbours and friends and colleagues and sisters and brothers in Christ, that our purpose of being peacemakers and reconcilers might be part of what motivates our lives today. Thank you that your spirit enables us to do far more than we could without him ever dream or imagine. May we know your blessings that we might bless others today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, thank you very much for joining me this morning and look forward to sharing time with you tomorrow morning as we bring this section on fellowship, community, our purpose as we bring this section to a close and move on to a new section over the coming week. Take care. God bless you.